Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to get through this thing called ETF batters. It's an epic clash between retail investors, that's you and your Aunt Melba, versus Wall Street's hedge funds, plus a sentiment-geared fund. It's a triple header. We've got Buzz, Cent, and GVIP coming up. So let's go crazy and let's go nuts. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. The influence of social media on everyday life is undeniable, and it's filtered into the way we invest with a sea of data on stocks and other investments readily available more than ever. So what would you rather have? An ETF that screens stocks based upon public sentiment, or one that screens stocks based upon sentiment by the pros, that's Wall Street's hedge fund managers. And what happens if we randomly toss in an actively managed sentiment-driven equity ETF with a hedging mechanism into the mix. Acquiring minds want to know. And that's what we've got on today's program. It's a triple header between Buzz, Cent, and GVIP. Now, we normally don't feature brand new ETFs with zero performance history or limited performance history, just because it's very difficult to really analyze and, and judge. But today's show, we're making an exception for Buzz and Cent. And it's really rare that we even break our own rules, but somebody's got to do it. It might as well be us. Now, before I introduce our judges, you can now listen to ETF Battles on iTunes, as well as Spotify and Google Podcasts. Hat tip to our production team for making that happen. If it's your first time watching ETF Guide TV, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now, helping us to judge today's matchup, we've got Eric Balchunas, Senior ETF Analyst at Bloomberg, and Mike Akins, Founding Partner at ETF Action, Welcome to both of you. Great to see you guys. It's great to be here, Ron. Yeah, likewise, Ron. Thanks. I forgot to mention Eric was nominated for a Lifetime Achievement Award by ETF.com. So congratulations to you, Eric. We hope you win. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it was an honor, for sure. So the four battle categories for today's triple header are cost, exposure, strategy, performance. And then we got the mystery battle category that our judges have the free reign to choose that single factor or maybe multiple factors to support their arguments. Nobody but our judges themselves know what that mystery category is. I've got the scorekeeping chores, so let's get started with the first category, which is cost. Mike, you're up. All right. Well, I definitely you can definitely say this isn't a battle of VOO and SPY. Um, the cost expense ratios on these three ETFs are pretty high in the ETF uh, world, but when you look at it absolute, uh, you got GVIP at 45, um, Buzz at 75, and then Sense coming up, coming in over 1%. So not uh, for the light of heart here, but they're very unique strategies offering very different exposure to the market. Just on an absolute basis, I'm going to give the nod to GVIP, but I'd say it's more about which strategy you like best when it comes to these three ETFs. That's a strong start. Thank you, Mike. Eric, how do you see it in terms of cost? Um, I would agree. And yeah, when this is, I would put all of these in what we call the shiny object lane. And when you're in that lane, cost really isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it, I guess it's a factor, but it would go way down the list, I think. Um, how this thing performs, if it works, you're looking at, you know, 40, 50 bips difference as almost meaningless. That's the, if you're lucky, if it does work. But I will say GVIP at 45, obviously cheaper. And it probably should be. GVIP is the most plain vanilla of them. And I would also look at the spreads. Um, it's interesting. Buzz is already trading at a penny spread. So if you are trading this stuff, that would give a little edge to Buzz. And Cent is five cents and GVIP is nine cents. But I mean, I would call this one a tie. If anything, I might give the edge to Buzz just because the spread is a little tighter. Very good. So we got, I got you down for a tie, split decision between GVIP and Buzz. Next category is exposure strategy. So Eric, you're still up. How do you see it? Yeah, so this is interesting. Buzz is, first of all, you're going to get mostly large cap. It is not a meme stock ETF. It's not going after the next GameStop. It's just looking at what's going on on social media and blogs and news stories the, all, all three of them do the same thing, which is do a lot of legwork for you. If you are interested in following what's going on out there, this just does all the work for you. And it's largely, it is large caps. And with Buzz, you're going to get communications, and but also some um, uh, non-cyclical stocks too. It's not all FANG in Buzz. 
And I like Buzz because of that element that it's more of a chameleon. It will throw in value stocks. I saw Ford is in there. There's an airline company in there. And if value were to come back, it would it would uh, basically you know follow uh, value stocks as well. If you look at Scent, it's largely tech, and it's largely uh, it's got 15% communications. And the same with GVIP. I think sometimes with these funds, you end up with a lot of the Qs kind of exposure. And you know, with, when you're tracking hedge funds, uh, they you don't know how they're using those stocks either. So it's just the long positions of hedge funds. Um, and so I probably give the edge here to Buzz just because it is more diverse sector wise, and it's large caps, and it will uh, basically um, mutate into whatever's going on out there. Very well said. Thank you, Eric. So we shift now to Mike. Exposure strategy. Do you? Agree with Eric's analysis. What's your take, Mike? I, I do agree with Eric's analysis. A little bit different reasons, but uh, in general, I, I'd give the the nod to Buzz. The primary factor, uh, anytime you're looking at factor selection, and whether these are technically factors, albeit special factors, not your traditional um, persistent factors such as value or momentum. They're they're specialty factors, is how we classify them. But if you think about um, that sector. I, I like to find strategies that are looking for stock selection and not sector selection. So when Eric talks about having a more diverse sector exposure, I think that's a, a big nod to buzz. Um, I will say that uh, Scent is going to be a better all cap solution. So if you're looking for something more into mid caps and small caps, definitely um, look at Scent from that perspective. And then kind of the wild card here is that hedging factor of scent. So they have the ability to write, they're writing put options against the portfolio. Um, in general, that's a negative for me. I believe that's a, a cost um, to the overall exposure. Long-term equity is gonna go up. There isn't, it's not free to write these hedge options. So if you think about it from that perspective, uh, strategy exposure, I like what Eric says about buzz and the, the fact that it's really not value, it's not momentum, it's not quality, it's, it's sentiment in that sense that it's looking at social media. And there clearly is um, a difference in the world. I think probably the most intriguing thing about the whole matchup is GVIP being hedge funds um, and uh, Buzz being Wall Street Reddit potentially. And just th that matchup is going to be fun to watch as it, as it progresses. But for the main reason being um, the sector exposure, I'm going to give the nod, the nod to Buzz, but very different in, in across these three portfolios. Excellent. So we move next to performance. And since two of the ETFs in today's matchup have super limited performance history, I'm curious to see what our judges come up with. So, Mike, you're still up. How do you see it in terms of performance between these three ETFs and this triple header? Yeah. So from a standardized performance, uh, historically looking, GVIP is the only one that's got a live track record. I would note that Buzz does have a five-year index track record. And it's actually an index you, track record you can look at in the sense that it's been published live every day. So what that the difference there is it's not a back test. There's no room for messing around. You can literally go back and every day over the last five years, there's been a published price for this index. So it's very close to as real to being live as invested money as you can get. And that track record is quite, quite impressive. It's easily outperformed S&P 500. So has GVIP over its limited three and a half year time period. Um, so both are off to good starts on performance. Scent, obviously, there's really nothing we can do there. Um, I'm gonna give it a split decision between uh, Buzz and, and uh, GVIP on past performance. But if I'm looking forward right now and kind of looking at what's going on in the marketplace, I would give the nod to Buzz simply because I like how it's kind of equally split out between the DraftKings, the, the big winners of the last year, and the Fords, the American Airlines, and some of the big pandemic losers. I like that balance of deep value and high momentum. Um, and I think that's why I'll give the overall nod to Buzz. Thank you, Mike. We shift now to Eric in terms of performance. How do you see it, Eric? Yeah, I would agree. I, Buzz to me gets the the, the win here. Um, it's interesting you talked about deep value and high momentum because we looked at the um, what Robinhood investors had in common, like with the stocks they picked, and those are the two things. So that's kind of what you want from an ETF like this. And it's ironic that we're sitting here talking about GVIP, which is scraping 13F filings that uh, of hedge fund holdings. <laughs> where hedge funds are now 
um, writing algorithms to go figure out what's going on with retail investors. So in a way, Buzz could actually end up feeding what's in GVIP eventually, um, because it seems like a lot of hedge funds are now watching what retail is doing. Anyway, just a, a side note there. And you know, I also think in the holdings of Buzz, uh, it's a very Portnoy type of portfolio, at least in the growth side. Pens in there, Twitter's in there, yeah. DraftKings. Um, the other thing with Buzz is it's going to be a lot more uh, volatile. The standard deviation is 37%. Cent is 26%, and it has less holdings. So again, if I'm look, I, I'm not looking to put my retirement savings in Buzz. This to me is like shopping for hot sauce. And with when I shop for hot sauce, I want the kick. I want that volatility. So even though the past performance was good, I also like the fact that it's set up to pop even in the future as well because of that uh, concentrated holdings. Very good. You get it all here on ETF Battles, hot sauce recommendations, Serrano or Habanero. Uh, you, you, you decide how hot you want to go. Um, thank you very much, Eric. Now we shift to the mystery battle category. So this is where our judges get to pick maybe that one factor or multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's matchup. So Eric, you're still up. What's your mystery battle category and who wins it? Um, I'm going to go back to uh, the Portnoy effect. Um, I, you know, when I'm looking at the holdings here again, I find that a lot of the stocks are the ones that I do hear a lot about on Twitter. And I like the fact that he's going to be out there talking about this thing. And some people <laughs> have argued that because he can actually move sentiment on stocks and, and get other people tweeting about them, that he could actually impact what's in the portfolio. I think that's a positive. Uh, some people are looking at this like that's, that could be bad. I, I think that's why you would buy this thing. You want to sort of buy in and ride on that Portnoy train, and it's been pretty successful. So to me, that's the wild card here. And also, it's fun. Portnoy is out there. He's talking about all this stuff. He'll believe me if it outperforms, he's going to let everybody know about it. So I like the fun element of buzz. And again, because it's, this is not obviously for your retirement savings, it's for a flyer. Uh, that's that to me would get the edge there. However, um, GVIP also, again, I hate to not go into hedge funds because that is a pain to look through 13 F's. And I do like what those 13 F trackers do, but I, I just got to go uh, to buzz for uh, that wild card Portnoy effect. Thank you very much, Eric. We shift now to Mike. What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? First off, I got to give a nod to my to Eric on, on bringing in the fun factor. That's the first time I've heard the fun factor used in the analysis, and I really like that. So I'm going to be stealing that for future reference. But uh, on the mystery category, I'm going to go with something a little different. I'm going to go with uh, time as my factor to consider here. And yeah, I think about when you think about investing, you know, it's like that, that old movie with uh, Denzel Washington where they're singing that Roll, Rolling Stone songs. Time is on my side. My side. Right? So yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right. So in investing, time is on your side. But I think in this scenario with these strategies, it might be the downfall of the, of the concepts in that by the time these indexes get around to rebalancing, on their strategies, whether it be sentiment or whether it be hedge fund holdings, which is way further out, you know, by the time you get 13F filings and collect it, is it still tracking the sentiment of today? And I think that could be one area where if you're really trying to capture sentiment in the market and think about it from a standpoint of, hey, this is what's happening today, by the time an index rebalances, is it still happening? And I think that's an overall risk to anything in a structured index methodology that's rebalancing once a month, once a quarter, that could be a risk to a downfall to the, the strategy. That being said, uh, I think Buzz has a better chance of capturing persistence of what's going on in social media. One, because it rebalances more frequently. Two, because it doesn't have to wait 45 days for the 13F filings to come out. And three, I think if we've, if we've learned anything from what's going on in the social media world right now, um, the sentiment can stay for a long time. I mean, I cannot believe we're still talking about GameStop. I would have bet a lot of money that, that this story was gone by now. And the fact I'm that not. it's still out there, there's clearly persistence in social media sentiment. So on that note, I'll just give the, the nod to Buzz, but my, my mystery category being time. All right. Very good. And now we shift to the overall battle winner. Mike, make your case. Sell us. 
Buzz. I All guess right. I gotta go with buzz. Just thinking about everything I said so far on uh, across especially exposure performance and uh, our mystery category of time. So I do like buzz. I think uh, I, I have no idea if it's gonna outperform going forward. Um, but if I look inside of the portfolio today, I think it gives a very unique balance between this idea of the glamour stocks or the, the high momentum stocks and the deep value. And I could see why, look, in investing over long periods of time, if you have a balanced portfolio, a portfolio that has more risk in it over that full time period is likely going to outperform. It's no different than equal weight versus market cap. Equal weight's going to beat market cap if you give it enough time. I think that's a very true statement you could be made about buzz. So to that extent, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to, uh, I guess, to the buzz crowd. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric, your final opportunity to give us your overall battle winner. How do you see it? Uh, same thing. Uh, buzz gets it. And I, I will say we were fans of buzz when it was before it was cool. Uh, <laughs> it was an ETF. Uh, Mike knows very well. And we wrote about it a lot. In fact, we had an article saying um, you should take this Twitter scraping ETF more seriously because it had gotten mocked when it first came out. I remember tweeting about it, um, but we were looking and the performance was just good and it kept being good. And we were kind of surprised it didn't get any love at the time. We're happy to see it resurrected. We, it's one of the more popular ETFs in what we call the Lazarus list. And this time around with the Portnoy effect, I think it's time has come both in having his backing, but also Twitter's grown a lot since the first iteration of Buzz. And we saw with GameStop how social media can actually move prices. And also, again, the fun factor, you're on, if you're on social and you're investing and you're part of that whole scene, this is a great way to sort of just bet on yourself to a degree. And I, I think that's good. I just, I would just caution, you know, this is not, <laughs> you wouldn't sell your Vanguard a total market fund and put it all in buzz. But if you can take the hot sauce approach, I think this is a, a fun product, a good product. And, um, you know, one that, uh, you know, could outperform, but the volatility could mean it could outperform a lot. Well, thank you judges for weighing in. And according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is buzz. And uh, you agreed pretty much in every single category. We did have a couple split decisions, for example, in performance and as well as cost. But nevertheless, the overall battle winner, you both agreed in that regard. And just a final point, never underestimate the power of public sentiment. Years ago, it was a great Gerald Loeb who once observed that public psychology is the single most important factor in shaping security markets and prices. And I believe that holds true for the foreseeable future. And again, a huge thanks to our judges for doing an illustrious job at helping us sort through today's triple header. So which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode and why? You got to tell us why. Give it to us in our YouTube comment section, or you can hit us up on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide, and be sure to hashtag ETF Battles. Thanks again for watching. I'm Rhonda Legend. Until next time, watch the battle before you invest.